I like sharp, dangerous things. So I bought a new axe. Now, I will be the first to admit, I do not know an awful lot about axes. However, what I do know is something that I have never seen before. And I had never seen an axe in this style uh, up until I stumbled across this one on eBay. There are a couple of things in particular which interested me about this axe. Um, the first of all being the head and the most prominent part of it. It's got an incredibly straight blade uh, and then coming into the neck of the axe it's got this sort of point here which I wasn't entirely sure of the purpose for. It appears that it has been forge welded together so I believe this was all one piece stretched out and then folded in on itself with a piece of hardened steel. What I will do is I will probably give this an etch just to double check that theory but you can tell from the way the eye is shaped um, and on the pole of the axe, it looks like it's all been folded rather than welded on. You can see here from the eye of the axe that it's absolutely enormous. Um, for a small handheld hatchet, um, the eye on this is about the size as a, a full-size sort of fireman's axe or something similar. And then on the back of the axe here, it's got a fixing which I'd never come across before. It's got this metal plate which runs up through the eye of the axe and then hooks around the top. Uh, and it's actually screwed into the main shaft of the axe there. Having done a little bit of research, I have found a couple of axes with this sort of fixture before, but I don't have any explanation as to why. Now, like I said, when I first came across this axe, I didn't really know anything about it at all. Since then, I've gone away and I've done a hell of a lot of research, and I've discovered that I believe it to be uh, a Russian tiger axe. No, not that kind of tiger. Taiga. Which I believe is the Russian name for the sort of tundra reaches of Siberia. Now, whilst trying to research tiger axes online, I came across a hell of a lot of hurdles. There is not a lot of information about them out there at all. But one thing that was constantly mentioned was a documentary called Happy People, which basically follows the life of trappers and hunters in Taiga. So, of course, I went away and I watched the documentary, and to be fair, it was quite interesting. You can see that this is the same style of axe that they're using. And you can see that they're not only using the cutting edge, but they also use it as a mallet as well. So it is a pretty robust bit of kit. Now, one of the main hurdles that I stumbled across whilst trying to research is that because it's a Russian style of axe, guess what? There's not a lot of Western information on it. Thankfully, however, my partner is a Russian-speaking Latvian, um, and she was able to find a little bit more information uh, and basically answer some of the questions I had. Now, whereas on a European axe, if we talk about the beard, we generally talk about sort of things like bearded axes, which is this section here. So if this section was cut out, this would be the beard sort of hanging down. However, on the Russian axe, they refer to this point here as the beard, and the purpose it serves is to actually increase the surface area of the impact edge of the blade. It's dispersing some of the shock actually along the shaft of the handle rather than having it pinpointed in the middle here. So it's actually to provide an area of strength. And again, I don't have confirmation of this, but I believe the way it's done is during the folding process of the forging, once it's forge welded together, I believe they actually cut into the blade and fold a section out to press it up against the handle there. And according to the website my partner found, that actually increases the dispersion of the shock by up to 60%. So for a small little feature, it serves a hell of a purpose. Now as for the handle itself, the reason why it's got such a thick shaft and why the eye is so big actually has quite a practical reason. Now whereas in Europe or America we might make our handles out of generally ash or uh, American hickory due to the fact that they're very strong, uh, they're quite vibration resistant and they also have a little bit of flex. Now, unfortunately in Russia they don't have access to hickory at all uh, and their access to ash is actually quite limited as well. Due to this reason they tended to actually make their handles out of either elm or apparently in some cases even birch. So in order to accommodate the, uh, the lack of strength, they obviously compensated by making the handle thicker along the top. Now, why don't they continue this width all the way down the handle? Two reasons. One, weight distribution. If you're gonna be chopping things, you want more weight towards the top so that when you swing, obviously you're getting more weight behind the impact. It's also due to the fact that overall, they want to keep this thing lightweight. This was designed to be carried around on a trapper's belt. Uh, so by literally just shaving down half the handle to half the width, you've saved some weight there. Now the reason the blade on this has such a minor curve and is pretty straight is due to the fact that over many years um, they discovered that having a smaller surface area in contact with the wood actually helps it to split. Now whereas if it was a completely straight edge, that general design is for carpentry, uh, you know, for whittling down pieces of wood and carving. 
However, they have more of a curve on it, it's then more likely to actually then get stuck in the wood. So by having a very slight gradient, they discover that that was having the best of both worlds, in their opinion, obviously. Now, if you come around to the actual eye of the axe, you can see that it's held in place by a metal wedge, as well as the plate, which I've already mentioned. I'm going to try and recycle this. My plan overall for the restoration of this axe is I don't really want to change anything on it. Now, I know there is no shortage of axe restoration videos on YouTube, but the majority of them, they clean up the head. Some of them even grind it, which I hate. But what almost all of them do is they drill out the handle and they replace it with a new one. Now I can understand why they do that, I mean don't get me wrong, this handle is pretty battered and pretty worn. However, I like the idea of doing a full restoration on this thing and trying to keep as many of the original parts as possible. Now I'm not 100% sure whether this plate at the back was originally installed when this axe was constructed or whether it's been put in place due to the fact that maybe the head was a little bit loose. Honestly, due to the fact that its appearance seems to match exactly to the head of the axe as well as the stake, and also the fact that the wood behind it appears to have sort of degraded at the same rate everywhere else, I believe this is probably an original part of the construction. So Rather than replace the handle and redo the eye and, you know, think I'm better than them, I'm going to try and restore this thing as is. So the first step is going to be having a hell of a time trying to get this wedge out, removing the screws and then trying to get this plate through so that the handle can be removed. I reckon there's enough material here for me to sand down and re-varnish the handle. There's a pretty dull end so I might have to possibly lose a little section and just bring it up slightly in order to address that. And there's a few cracks and things here I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with yet. But I'm hoping it's salvageable. We're certainly going to give that a try. Now, in regards to the head, I know for a fact that I am going to be wire wheeling this thing in order to get the majority of the rust off. However, I'm not going to be grinding it and hand polishing it, as to me, that's removing the character and the history of the axe. Um, I also want to see if there's any touch marks or maker's marks or stamps or anything in the steel, because at the moment you can't make anything out, and I'll be really interested to find out if there is anything in there. The only part I may grind is along the edges here, just to make it shiny and pretty, but uh, yeah, the actual faces and cheeks of the axe I'm going to leave as is. Now, after wire wheeling, what I'm thinking I might do is try something new, which is then to boil the rust... Uh, and then treat with a cold blue solution to both blacken the faces and uh, act as a rust protection. I'll obviously be doing the same thing to the plate at the back here, the wedge and the screws too. So overall, we've got our work cut out for us a little bit. It's a beautiful item though, and I'm pretty excited to give this a try because I've never done this before. Right then, first things first, we need to undo these screws, slide this bracket out, and then see if we can't remove the wedge and remove the head. Somehow, I get the feeling this is not going to be easy. Well, straight away I can tell these are going to be little blighters. The threads appear to have stripped because they just turn and nothing happens. So, instead, I'm having to use a pair of pliers in which to remove them. Which is slow going, but at least you can keep a grip on it. Well, I think it's fair to say those were the original screws. They've pretty much rusted into nails now. I'll see if I can't knock the head loose a bit by uh, tapping the back of the axe on this piece of wood against the anvil here. Hopefully we can separate it from the front of the eye there. I don't know how well you'll be able to tell, but it is now loose. Very slightly, but it's loose. It'll make getting that wedge out easier. What I'm trying to do now is using a chisel, I'm just trying to gently prise away the wedge from the inside of the wood, just break the, uh, the rust seal which has congealed there. But it's awkward trying to do it without actually damaging the wood, because again, I want to be able to reuse the handle. Gently does it. I'm hoping if I attach this mini vise to the wedge, it will give me some leverage in which to get it out, but I don't know whether it's going to be strong enough, have a strong enough grip. Don't know, we'll try. Oh, I'll tell you what, that shifted. Only a little, but it shifted. Oh, perfect, look at that. Now the real moment of truth is whether or not the handle will come out easily. Oh, ow. I spoke too soon, but that has moved, so I reckon we can get that out without too much trouble. My leather inserts for my vice there slipped off. I'm trying not to scratch the face of the axe any more than it already is. I don't want to have to deal with additional damage on the cheeks. Come on, come on, come on. Oh. There we go. Head and handle separated. And actually, that doesn't look in terrible nick. Reckon we might be a knock there. I say this every single time I use a wire wheel in one of my videos. But if you're going to use one, for God's sake, wear eye protection. These barbs fly off and will stick in anything nearby, including your eyes. Right, with that out of the way, let's get on to grinding this head. Ooh. 
Well, here's what we're up to. I've uh, wire wheeled all of the exterior. I've still got to get inside there with a, uh, a Dremel or something with a wire brush. And it is looking a lot better, but there's still a lot of crud on the surface I'm going to try and get rid of. So I'm going to try using a slightly more heavy duty uh, wire wheel on an angle grinder and see if I can't knock some of this off. Well, that second go with the wire wheel definitely helped um, and it does look a lot better. Unfortunately, I'm still not seeing any obvious touch marks or stamps or anything like that, so I think we'll just have to put this down to a generic. Um, on a bit of further research, I did find out that these were apparently used by the uh, Soviet army uh, as a military axe quite a lot as well, so potentially it could be a mass-produced one of them. Um, I would have thought that it had some kind of um, army stamping on if that was the case, but I don't know. Either way... I've just got to clean up the inside of the eye, like I say, and then it's going to be on to doing a, uh, a clean-up of the profile. So I'll use the belt grinder there uh, just to go around the edges and make it all tidy and nice. I don't know how well you can see this, but uh, what I was talking about earlier, about the, uh, the forge weld sandwiching a piece of hardened steel, it looks like you can see that running down the centre of the groove there. But like I say, once I'm done profiling it, I'll give it an acid, acid etch and uh, we'll see if we can uh, distinguish between the two. Okay guys, we've got this thing uh, reprofiled fully and it's now ground to a 400 grit on all of the sides. The next thing I want to try is what I've already spoken about. I want to be using this ferric chloride and I just want to do a little etch along the side here just to see if we can see the difference between the hardened steel uh, and probably mild steel that they've used on the outside. So let's give this a try. Well, it's very difficult to see, but you can see there is a slight stripe going down the middle but I grant you, I wouldn't blame you if you don't believe me, because that is very difficult to pick up in this light. Right, folks, here is where we are up to so far. Uh, we have got the first bevel of the blade put in. Uh, I'm not going to sharpen it fully yet until after I've done the boil in the cold blue. Uh, and we've got all of the faces, the sides, uh, down to a 400 grit, minus these parts here, which are still at a 100 grit, because uh, I had to get in there with my uh, rotary tool. But uh, yeah, next step, we'll try boiling it, and then we'll try uh, cold bluing it, and then we'll work on a handle. Well, I've got no idea if this is going to work. This is a very delicate balancing act, as the axe head doesn't quite fit, but I'll flip it over in a minute and we'll do the other side. Well, I boiled each side for about five minutes, and then I've oiled it. Can't really tell if it's made much difference, but either way, I'll cold blue it when that arrives. Well, it's a new day, so first things first, we're going to acetone this in order to degrease it, uh, and then we're going to cold blue it, and hopefully it will come out nice. Well, that came out nice. I'm really pleased with the way that looked. Um, it has obviously stained the blade black again, which was obviously expected, and the edges. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the edge, or both the top and the bottom, blackened, because I think that looks really nice and neat. Uh, and then both the pole and the blade, I'm going to just uh, touch up again, make them uh, contrast nicely. And then that's the head done. And there we have it, all touched up, all oiled, all looking very pretty and nice. So, that's the axe head done, now we've just got to uh, work on the handle. Well, that took quite a while. Uh, it's not perfect, but I think it's as good as I'm going to get it without ruining it. There's a few little divots like here and down the bottom you've got some score marks and a few little uh, holes from knots and things like that, but it's still solid and it's still in relatively good nick once you scrape the top layer off, so I think we're going to go with that. Unfortunately, I think the original screws are a bit past it, so I'm going to re-drill and I'm going to re-screw with some new ones, make it look pretty.
Как говорят, у человека все можно отобрать. Богатство, здоровье. Ремесло уже не отберешь. Раз ты это ремесло заимел, оно у тебя на всю жизнь. Знать ты его будешь. Согласен?